One of the fastest ways to learn Photoshop is by creating little art pieces in there that are teaching you new tools in the plethora of tools that it offers. What the hell is even that? That being said, my favorite way to use Photoshop is photo bashing. Could say my almost my entire art shtick is about removing people's faces or parts of them at least. This tutorial is exactly that. It's a simple way to take a fair use image. I use hexels.com and manipulate it in a way to make it kind of creatively your own. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first step that I would take if I was to erase the top of someone's head is actually by creating a layer above the head and instead of masking out her face, we're just going to paint over it. Well, we wanted to match the darkest part of her hair. So to do that, we are going to press I and select that color in our primary color and then we're gonna go brush and we're gonna right click, make sure we have a hard round brush and we can start pretty rough here. So what we're going to do is just start painting and it will help you in the future if you try and follow the contours of the face here. So we know that the face is wrapping around and then we have the cheekbones that slightly go in towards the nose and then the nose is gonna come out in kind of the same direction as the cheek and then we're gonna go back in for the other side of the bridge of the nose, come back out, and kind of wrap around. All of this is going to be editable. What we wanna do is just try and get as much of this painted over as possible to start. And we can go through and mask everything else out later using layer masks. If you wanna put some time into it, you can try and paint around these hairs, but for my final piece, I felt no one was really going to be paying too much attention to that as they were going to be looking at what we've replaced in the first place. Once you have kind of a general shape, this is a little bit messy. What we want to do is we want to be able to go in and erase and redraw any of this, this color that we've added over her head. And the way that we do that is by adding a layer mask to this shadow layer. So we'll label that shadow and then we come down here to the layer mask and we can just add one to it. Now, if you've watched any of my videos or if you have any understanding of Photoshop at all, you'll know that it, while selecting your layer mask, it will erase and redraw in based off of having black or white as your brush color. If I have black selected and I paint, it will erase my layer. If I have white selected, it will repaint back in what I had before, much less destructive than using the actual erase tool. I'm going to time-lapse masking in to match the form of her face and get this shadow kind of a little bit more accurate. All right, now that that is masked out, if we zoom out, we can see that it's more or less following the contour of her kind of lower eyes and her nose bridge. So now we can move on to getting the top of her head put in. And this is going to be a relatively simple process. First thing we want to do is we want to add a new layer. And this layer we can say head top, label that. And we wanna mask it to the layer right below. So anything that we paint in here will stay on the shadow that we just drew so we don't have anything overlapping on her actual face. What we also want to do is we want to change our colors. Since we're now working with her skin tone, we're going to follow kind of a similar process to grabbing the shadow. So I'm going to start with not quite the lightest highlight. I'm going to probably start right here on her cheek. I'd say the, high, the lightest highlight is probably right on the bridge of her nose. But if we move right here and we just select that as our highlight color, and then we hit X to switch to our shadow color, and now we're also not going to grab the darkest shadow. We're gonna grab probably one of these orangish, greenish colors down here, but not totally the darkest here. So we can also hit I and we can just select that. And now we have the two colors that we're gonna end up painting in. But the first thing I wanna do is a similar process to what we did to get the shadow in. On this new layer, we're gonna hit the lasso tool. And I like to use the poly polygonal lasso tool over the regular lasso tool. The polygonal lasso tool allows you to click um, and, and take a straight line back. 
So what I will do is kind of make multiple selections around until I get a general shape that I'm looking for. And the nice thing is, is we can go outside of where we have painted because whatever we paint in this, if I switch to brush and I switch to our highlighted color and I paint all of this in, it's going to be masked directly to our shadow layer. So nothing is going to show up on on this that isn't uh, isn't in the shadow layer, which already you can see this composition slightly coming together. What we're going to do on top of this is a mix of blending these shadows and highlights. And if you want to keep it as separate as possible, you can create a separate highlight and shadow color um, layer on top of this. I don't mind just painting right over. Um, and I like to switch to a soft brush for this with a lower opacity. And this way I can kind of just get a nice blend. I will be mixing around with the colors a little bit. So you might see me painting, you know, some shadows, in, some deep shadows in the back. And then I might come down here and switch my color to one of these warmer tones as I come up closer to the front. Now I'm liking how that kind of looks. Now what I want to do is I want to come to this and I want to also add a layer mask to this. And we're going to switch back to the hard round brush here. We're going to make sure our opacity is back up at 100% right up here at the top. I like to hit Alt and right click and drag to change the scale of my brush. And right now what I want to do is make sure that this shape is kind of lining up with this over here. Now. To make this a little bit easier, I'm probably gonna take my smoothing up. You can take it all the way up to 100. I find that that's a little too slow. And if you're not using a stylus and a tablet, I'm using a mouse right now to get this done. And just use a little bit of the smoothing to get a, a nice smooth edge as I come and try and bring this to match this shape. Now, as you can see, we ended up going a little too strong on that corner. So I can just control Z and we can just kind of try that again. But again, all I'm trying to do is make this edge match this edge. So they're parallel. I'm feeling like now the issue is less about this. This is matching pretty well. Let's make sure that the head doesn't look like it's kind of oblong shaped because this angle now is going this way, almost horizontal, we kind of want the back to do the same. So I'm gonna switch over to my white brush while I'm still selected on this, and we're just gonna paint some of this back in. And there we go, that's starting to look really good. But we, there's a one more little touch that I like to add to make the seam between the drawn image and her actual face match a little bit better. And that's by adding a little bit of an edge light and the way to do that is we can go right above here. We're gonna add one more layer. We're going to also mask it down below. And what I want to do here is we're gonna call this edge highlight and we're going to grab one of the brightest brights and one of the mid-tone darks down here like that. And we're just going to create a relatively, we can get rid of the smoothing, a relatively wide little shape here like that and get it all the way right up to the edge. And then we're going to mask this as well. We're gonna hit brush for masking and we're gonna come and hit X to swap to black so that we can erase some of this out. We don't want this to be too strong. We want it to be very subtle and some slight variation in this is okay. And then we want wherever there's highlights on the face to add a little bit of that highlight color. Now with this, I do like to go to a soft brush and I do like to drop the opacity down a decent amount. 20% should be fine. And since I've already selected my highlight color, I'll start painting some highlights in here where it gets a little bit darker. I'll let the shadows kind of show up and, and it's just gonna be a little bit of blending, right? and that's looking pretty good. So one of the final steps for something like this is making sure kind of the details of this skin material right here and her skin match. And one of the easiest ways to do that is with grain. But another way to do that is by using the 
camera raw filter to really kind of tie everything together. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select my top layer and I'm going to go Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, E, if you're on Mac. And that's gonna create a merged version of everything below. And then what we can do is we can come into our filter, go down to Camera Raw Filter, and this is gonna be a lot of personal preference. If you want it to be a little less contrasty, kind of blends together a little bit more, you can do that. I personally like to have a little bit more contrast. I feel like it kind of ties certain aspects together. And then I also like to come down here and I like to drop the saturation a little bit while raising the vibrance a little bit. I, that's just a personal preference. I do like to take the texture up. I do like to take the clarity up a little bit. I also like to add a decent amount of grain here. Now the reason that I do this is here in her face, it is going to add some color noise that's kind of going to match the color noise here, which can really help sell the fact that it's a continuous piece of of flesh that's going over the top of her her skull. Hit OK and move on. One of the last things I like to do when doing photo bashes like this is kind of creating my own backdrop as well as maybe doing a recoloring. Now in one of my previous videos I have shown you guys how I use the difference uh, blend mode up here to do my own coloring and what I want to do is do that with this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit W to get the selection tool. And on this image, I'm going to make sure that the entirety of her is selected. So there's a part of this book that isn't. I want to make sure that the book is selected. So holding shift lets me also select that. And then there's a few little pieces in here that didn't actually get selected, which is fine. So I can go back to the lasso tool and I can hit shift and hold it down and add to the selection I just made with the W selection tool. Now this isn't going to be a perfect mask here. There's some stuff that isn't going to really be selected. Like there's parts of her hair here that are not selected. And I do kind of want to grab those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best to just select right along the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can mask this out later. And all of these wispy hairs up here, I don't feel like I need them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I grab the main body of her hair. And I'm going to, holding Alt, diselect all of this extra wispy hair. Because it's just not necessary in my opinion. Now this may seem like it's a little bit messy, but remember when you are removing someone's face, or you're messing with the human body in a way like this, most people aren't going to be noticing small details, like how the hair is looking. They're gonna be looking at someone who's missing the top of their head. So you can kind of like spend time on the things that people are gonna focus on rather than spending time on things that most, like 99% of people that look at it aren't gonna realize, oh, that tuft of hair wasn't perfectly selected out of the background. Um, and one way we can see if this is a good selection is let's select her, right? We're gonna hit this mask to select her out of the background. Now all of these layers below are still showing. So what we can do is we can shift select all of these, drag them right down into this bin and call it comp. Like that's our actual composition that we put together and we can turn that off. And honestly, this I'd say this hair selection is pretty decent. It looks pretty good to me. We might make some changes to it here, but first thing I wanna do is add a backdrop. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm gonna add a new layer, drag it below her. We're gonna go G to grab the bucket tool. Now I should have some swatches here. This is one of my favorite colors and I like that as a background color. And then I also like to use the same color for my difference. So let's go to difference here. And I think that this just looks absolutely gorgeous. Now another thing we can do if we want, let's say, her to mix into the background a little bit better, what we can do is use the same color as her shadow as a background, and that will kind of make her blend in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off this top layer, and I'm gonna click on my bottom layer, which we can double click and name background, and double click the top layer and call color grade. And on the background, I'm going to hit I, and select her shadow. Now that's, uh, that's the color that's selected and we're just gonna click on this background layer 
and change the background to her shadows color. Now when we turn on our color grade, which is this blue layer over everything, set to the difference blend mode, we get this awesome orange and purple and some red kind of color aid going on here. Now hit Control, Option, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, E, if you're on Mac, um, and create a merged version of this. Come back up to our camera raw filter, and we can start messing with these colors a little bit. We can add a little bit more contrast. We can bring maybe some of the shadows up a little bit, bring some of the blacks down a little bit, bring them up. I almost like it a little bit more vibrant here. So I'm okay with kind of bringing the blacks up to a, a higher level. And then we're gonna take that saturation down, take the vibrance up. This is a personal preference. You do not have to do this. Another thing we're gonna do here, we're also gonna mess with that texture and we're gonna mess with that clarity again. I really like how this makes it look. Some people will say it looks a little too over-processed. That's my art style. I like a little bit over-processed. But also looking at this, you can see how that edge that we added really just kind of ties everything together. It's not as clean of a cut at the top. It shows a little bit of imperfections in the skin, kind of the way that it would look if you had just only half of a head. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add more of that grain. And some of you throughout this tutorial probably noticed that this over here isn't perfect. I let some little accident happen where this isn't exactly uh, kind of perfectly wrapping around. I left that on purpose to show for just in case anyone else didn't notice. Most people aren't gonna notice. People are gonna be looking at this and be thinking, wow, that's quite a unique look to uh, an art piece. And as you can see in this tutorial, it's relatively easy to do. It doesn't take that many steps uh, to really kind of create these fun little art pieces. I hope this was useful to you guys. Also wanted to say thanks for a thousand subs. I can't believe we uh, we went up like 500 subscribers in like a month and a half. So obviously that means that I must be providing some kind of service to you guys. I'm glad you enjoy the content. Uh, drop a comment if there's anything that you're struggling with or anything you want to know how to do. And I would love to make a tutorial for you on that. That being said, don't sweat the particulars. Have fun, create cool art, and I will see you guys in the next video.